Hi, my name's Krista. Welcome to the Secret Yarnery Crochet Vlog, Episode 7. Take two. So today is now Saturday. I filmed yesterday, take one, but I ended up rambling too much, so I deleted it. I'm uploading this one. You know, it's one of those things. You gotta... You have to talk, but you can't talk too much, but you gotta talk, but you can't talk too much. So, take two is today. We are in my class area. It's like the living room of my guest house because the light is now the afternoon and the afternoon light comes this way and that room is all dark where my yarn is. So now we're here. So that's why it looks a bit different. Let's see, so Thursday I met with my ladies. Instead of having well, we started with eight, so instead of the eight, I had 18, and then instead of having 18, I had 23, at least 22. So that was a lot of ladies. And I don't want to train new crocheters every week. I want to train and then build on it so that we have good product. Because I'm going through a lot of yarn and having a lot of things that are really crazy. So, oh, excuse me. Let's start with the really crazy. Oh, oh sorry. Okay, joining. Perfect example. This is why I don't want to train new ladies every week. What is wrong with that granny square? So how they join, or how they want to join, is no, they don't. It's not a slip stitch. They literally do single crochet. Lots of people don't do a slip stitch. Like they put it in, bring it back, wrap your yarn, and take off too, and that is how they join, which is obviously a single crochet. So uh, they still join in the middle. I've I've asked them to join in the corner, you know, just so you know it's a usable piece. So. They join on the side and then literally single crochet over to the corner and do this weird joining. Can you see that? It's crazy. So they've joined here crazy, here crazy, here crazy. I've asked her to fix most of them on the outer but you can still see here. She joined here with some sort of weird single crochet on top of the doubles to get to the corner. So. That's what I'm working with. It's not as bad as it got. I mean, I'm still generally happy with it. Um, I made something cute from these. I'm probably sitting on it. Yes, I am. Little bags for little girls. So just the two granny squares together, single crochet around the outside, single crochet chain, not single crochet, just a regular chain for the handle, and a cute little bag for a girl. So I thought those are really cute and won't cost that much. I tried one with a row doing the same single crochet but two rounds. So the chain and then a single crochet into the handle. Takes up more time, takes up more yarn. No opinion. I kind of, I, I like this one, I think it looks super cute. And I like this one because it looks like sturdy. But I think this looks cuter for a girl. I don't know. Anyway, that, those are from Crazy Granny Squares. Because, you know, it's a, you know, it's not, it's just a little novelty item. It's not like a, it's not an heirloom you expect to hand down forever. But I think it's also still super cute. Now... Good thing I have two ladies that literally crochet like bosses, like very good. So these two ladies made really nice granny squares. And the ends, they joined how I wanted them to join. They finished how I wanted them to finish. I think they're really, really cute. Very well done. So these ones... I'm very happy with. And I have these ladies making granny squares again this week here. 
I gave them six balls of more neutral colors like a gray, a tan, and a you know a grayish blue things you can incorporate into clothing items. Bag, I'm thinking messenger bags, you know, cute things. Not necessarily the bright colors, but something really cute. And then a ton of other good ones, not bad. You know, a bit looser. I mean, the stitches are looser, more loose, but still nice. And then my house mom, who I gave really nice colors to, and she took my scrap extra spare balls, mixed everything together and made 104 more crazy granny squares. All different colors, all super random, but they're made well and they're the same size. So those can be joined together in some sort of, I'm thinking of like a granny blanket with these ones or maybe two smaller granny blankets uh, that maybe we can raffle off or something like that. They are cute. Everybody else pretty much stuck to their colors or the colors that I gave them. Like so. And then some are just super random. So, but not bad. Nice. So a lot of granny squares, a lot of granny square joining going on. So we made some little bags, just the two, just to see which handle we like better. The opinion at class was the skinny handle is sweeter, like it looks cuter which makes me happy because obviously it's way less work and nobody likes going into your foundation chain. So this takes like more than double the time and we want to just sell them for like four dollars or something like just a little cute little bag. Can't say no to your daughter. Hopefully. So that is one thing. Can make a lot of those and put those back. Now with this lady's nice granny squares, I was thinking last night what to do and thought of making one of those granny square jackets. Ish. That's what I was thinking anyway, but because she did a variety, so she did some with green and some with uh, gray as the outer color and some with blue as the outer color, which I wanted her to do. I think that's really nice, but it makes it weird for a jacket. Like I just wanted it to be the same. Like I don't want your eye to fight what you're looking at. I just want you to uh, like it or it to make sense. So I started and you know we have this, maybe you don't know, I have this crazy mannequin. We call her Scarella because she's kind of scary. She's not the Chucky, like she's not a Chucky, but um, She's really big boned. She's like six foot two and she's got a little tiny head stuck on a really fat neck. And she's got, a, she's very well endowed and she's very well endowed. So it looks like she's standing, well she is standing like that with a little eraser head on the top of a big pole neck and it's a hot mess. But I appreciate, I actually did find a mannequin in like brand new for sale in Nairobi. So I mean, I'm not complaining. I know where I am and I'm happy I have her. However, uh, all of my crochet items other than handbags, which I can put on her arm and she can model my handbags, you can't actually put anything on her because it'll never fit anybody else after. It will like stretch out. So I would like to take her to this biz baz, have her standing outside the tent because she is a mannequin in Nairobi. I mean, it is still a thing. So I think it would attract, you would at least look at it. You'd be like, oh wow, what's that? Wow, it's a mannequin. Yes, it is. Um, so I started to make this vest. I was gonna make a jacket, but not enough, like the sleeves and anyway, middle of the night. So I've decided I'm gonna make her a vest out of those granny squares. So I've got the back done and we put a slit so hard to show a slit on the side at the bottom to kind of like help scoop over her bottom section so the green ones ending with the green and then blue for the last round and then gray for your edging and then 
around the neck, sorry if it's hard to see, around the neck, the neck is up here. I'm gonna do like the triangle granny squares. Not sure if I'm gonna put them right up at the neck or one down. I think I'm gonna have them one down. So this is just gonna be open, so there's like a breathing space and then an angle to make it kind of, it'll overlap a little bit in the front. Because it's three granny squares wide. and then slits on the bottom there. So working on that, but went for lunch instead. So had crochet class this morning, a small one just for my friends, and uh, went for lunch after to a fabulous Japanese restaurant. I will find pictures and put them probably here. I think there's more space. Uh, really, really great uh, teppanyaki restaurant that we've gone to forever since I moved here. So it's very good, same owners the whole time, same great food, it's always delicious. So we went for teppanyaki and I'm super full. And I haven't put my phone off, sorry about that. So wanted to come back and just refilm this. While I was having teppanyaki, my dad called to say, what happened, your video showing up is deleted, blah, 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 who deleted it? It was me, I don't wanna harp on about um, my crochet ladies not crocheting properly, which is apparently what I did, so no point in that. So making a vest for Scarella and bags and my crochet house mom, or my house mom from the orphanage, made these balls last week. So just in all regular colors and all super squishy, not so much it's for Christmas, which are the ones like down under, but for throwing around the house toys, kids, you know, just literally for balls because they're so great. So she made all of those. She made 50, I don't know, 52 or, I don't know, she made a lot. So those are all done. I might have her make a little more just so it's literally heaping, but let's see. And then when I went to deliver my cat toys, the lady was like, oh, those look like puppets. And I was like, I don't even know what you're talking about. They don't look like puppets. That is a cat toy, like super obvious. Then I went home and I was like, if you put two legs the same length, and two arms the same length and the head with two eyes and a mouth and some hair, it could totally be a puppet. We could do like boys and girls. So instead of just having a cat toy for pets, we could have like kids could actually walk around doing like a boing, boing, boing with a boy puppet or a girl puppet. So I was like, what a good idea. So I made, this is the first one but it is a puppet or a doll that you can still boing 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 on the soup spoon or not soup spoon, ugali spoon, wooden spoon. So she jumps around, super cute. She's got little feet. So to make feet, you just chain for longer. So on the bottom, I, I slip stitched for about six stitches for feet and about four stitches for hands, one color circle for the face, and one color circle for the hair, or the back of the head. And one of your legs also goes up to be your chain. So that's all connected. And then for the one I'm having my house mom do, she's leaving the yarn connected for the face and the yarn connected for the hair, like when she's finished doing the circle, and then aligning them when she stitches them together. So they're at about like four o'clock and seven o'clock, something like that, like on the same side down here. So she'll join this half in the hair color and she'll join this half in the face color. So you don't have that beard that this one has. But I thought that would be super cute. And then just a little bit of hollow fiber to like poof out the face. And super cute, boys and girls. 
So I'm excited about that. I think I think she'll have a lot of fun making those. And I think they'll be fun for kids. And cats. If you want a cat toy, your cat can chase around a little girl. But can also just have a cat toy. So I thought those were cute little ideas. And also on the way to Brackenhurst, I'm just making sure there's nothing else I haven't shown you. Ooh. Okay, I think that's it. On the way to Brackenhurst, I took a little video of the drive out there. So a little bit of like my neighborhood and then a little bit, you know, of the highway and climbing up into tea country and all that. So that will be following this. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. I'll have it at the end of the video. And thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, anything, if you've made any of my tutorials, please join our Facebook group. Post your pictures. And if you have any comments, ideas, suggestions of what I could have my ladies doing. Oh, this week they are going to be making bunting, or they have started making bunting. So I have them hanging up above me actually, but I'll show you next time. They're really cute. Granny triangles. So instead of doing four sets of three double crochets, you do three sets of four double crochets. Same as a granny square. So we're gonna be doing bunting out of those. I have everybody going home with um, three different colors, six balls of yarn, three different colors to make the bunting. All as an assortment that matches our theme. So it'll be super cute. And, um, and then I'll be stitching those together myself just to make sure the finishing is good same as the bags I'll be doing those myself just to make sure the finishing is good and anyway if you have any ideas what the ladies could be working on next week let me know in the comments below and thank you so much for watching and stay tuned if you want to see a little bit about Kenya the drive around Kenya and if not I'll see you next time and thank you so much for watching please like subscribe and share and stay hooked So here we are. This is like my neighborhood-ish. It's a big estate, uh, like a gated community. It's probably, there's probably a few thousand houses inside. Um, everybody has half acre or more. So that kind of keeps the standard of living up. There's no apartments. Everything is single dwelling, like one house to yourself. That's my driver, Mike. And that is a truck full of dogs. So you can hire a security company that will bring you a security guy and a dog at night and then come and pick the dog in the day and the security guy. You'll get a different one in the day or none in the day, depending what you want. We, of course, have our own security guy and our own dogs. But that's for people like, you know, if you just come here for a couple years, you don't want to actually employ everybody yourself. Uh, it's an option. That's what people do, but I don't know, not my thing. That's the new bypass. By new, I mean it's a few years old, but it's actually good tarmac, so we like it. And that's a place that sells plants and terracotta pots that they have painted silver. Now there's a little shortcut to get to the bypass. You drive through this village. Uh, it looks like a slum, but it's not a slum because, in my opinion, slums are full of people that kind of don't work, like the thieves, drunkards, that kind of thing. And villages are just low-income housing, like local housing, near where they work. So all these people in, that live in there uh, have good-paying jobs. They all work in Runda, generally as a house staff or gardeners like that, and they live nearby. Now we've gotten onto the bypass which is that overpass that uh, we went under. So now we're gonna be on top. And you can see on the side of the road what you can buy. So you can buy concrete, trees, uh, dirt, sand, uh, more plants, terracotta pots, concrete, and more terracotta pots. This is Two Rivers. It's also on the bypass. Two Rivers is the second largest mall in Africa. It just opened Oh, like February or something. So about six months ago, and it's half empty. On top you have, there's apartments, you can buy an apartment. Now, there's Mike again driving, and behind Mike is a tree, not trees, flower plantation, flower farm, where you can, they make roses, grow roses, not make them. So now this is going up, uh, we're climbing altitude, so your ears pop around that time. 
they can even pop again now because we're climbing up from Nairobi. Nairobi is uh, 3,500 feet, 5,000 feet. I should find out. I'll link it on the screen when I get my facts straight. And going up, so we're still climbing up uh, to Tagoni area. I will also put the elevation of Tagoni on the screen once I Google it. Now up ahead, you'll see this bike, motorbike, and he has all these plastic crates stacked on the back. So generally that's like a bakery, like bread delivery. Uh, he's already delivered what he had, so. But they can stack them so high, it's crazy. So on that side again, there's tea on that side, that field over there, that's tea, beautiful and green, and these covered white greenhouses are all full of roses. Usually roses, some have uh, vegetables, but that's more farther from Nairobi. This is quite close, so it'll be roses uh, all full. And they also have the netting across so the birds don't come down. Acres and acres. Roses are 20 for two bucks. Yep, I said that out loud, 20 roses for two bucks. They do have thorns. If you want ones without thorns, they are more, you might pay $4. So now we're turning off that main road, which is Lamuru Road, and we're going towards Lamuru Golf and Country Club. This road used to be so bad, I used to always go with my gardener uh, just in case I got a flat tire because it was like two foot deep, three foot deep potholes and ridges. So you are like climbing. It was bad. Like I really felt bad for my car. But now look at it. It's perfect. So... That's really awesome. So this road cuts through to Brackenhurst, kind of, very close to Brackenhurst. And the Gulf and Country Club is on the left with this beautiful lake. Isn't that great? So we call this lake number one on our tour. Uh, and that's the Gulf and Country Club. Uh, you can kind of see it over there. Well, maybe you can't. And I, there's these little shacks on this side. I don't know what they're for, but there's a lot of them and then banana trees. So that is lake number one. And now we've turned on to the other main road, Banana Hill Road, and we're turning left into Brackenhurst. So this officially is Brackenhurst Hotel and Conference Center. It is 100 acres of gorgeousness. It's got a narrow little road, but what do you do? It's really pretty. There's no public transit on the road, so that's how you get there. You walk. And uh, it's quite old. I think it was founded in 1924 or 1918, something like that. There are speed bumps like this sporadically all along the way. And you can see ahead lake number two, complete with ladies doing their laundry. I've even seen uh, a baptism on a Sunday. We came on on a Sunday and they were baptizing. There was like a church going on and they were baptizing in that lake. It was really nice singing and dancing and uh, it was really cool. So we joke that there's crocodiles in there. We call them mambas, but there's not. But we're like, did you see a mamba? Anyway, there isn't. There's ducks occasionally. So that is lake number two. And we are back on our cute road going up to Brackenhurst. And this is the place that has, all through this place, has the more than 1,000 varieties of trees. And this is the gate to Brackenhurst. It's about a three-minute drive because of the speed bumps and how narrow it is. You have to pull off if a car is coming towards you. And then this is Brackenhurst. So Ascari. Ascari means security guard. That white building that you just caught a glimpse of. Um, that's where I meet the crochet collective. We have a lovely room up in there that they've given us to crochet in on Thursday mornings. And then the parking. So this is where we'd park if we were going up to the crochet collective. Another parking on the other side. There's parking all the way through, really. It's a, it's a very big compound with really cute older buildings. There's not many new ones. They've pretty much repurposed the older buildings. Like that's a library and uh, some sort of Bible library. And so that is Brackenhurst. Now, I was so busy with my ladies, forgot to film the room and the ladies, but that there is tea. I'm trying to show you on my home now. And over there is more flowers, 
hard to see, but I tried to uh, get a good picture of it. There's also some vegetables growing on this side, uh, just to see how green it is. That's tea country. Also great farmland. It's about half an hour from Nairobi, 40 minutes, 45 if you're driving slow, half an hour if you're driving quick. And now we're back in my neighborhood.